This video is about successfully moving on from a toxic relationship. I will explain how I managed to do this from a toxic relationship with a toxic person and how you can do the same. To find out more, please stay tuned to this video. Welcome to the SCG Show, the home of education entertainment. If you're new here, please hit the like button and turn your life around with our sponsor, BetterHelp. The link is in the description below. Almost two long, grueling years ago, I made the decision to walk away from a toxic relationship with a narcissist that I had been with for a while. I had no idea what the future had in store for me. It was a dark time. It was winter, autumn around that time I walked away, and I had to grieve the process and adjust to being single. A few months later, the pandemic struck. Then my dad got ill and died just six months after my breakup. I had to begrudgingly welcome a whole new level of pain in a lockdown, isolated and alone. Words could not describe the frustration and agony. Part of my brain processing the breakup still, the other grieving my dad, the lockdown, etc. I often use the statement, if you stare long enough into the abyss, aka darkness or hell, it starts to eventually stare back at you. That was what I endured and went through, a dark time where I saw no end in sight. In 2020, I went on two separate walking dates in total. We never got on and I never tried emotionally to take it any further. I remember a friend saying to me down the phone, I worry for you, SCG. Will you ever date again? Will you ever be in a relationship? Through my pain and frustration, I even gave up on relationships saying, I don't need them or want them at all. Grief can do that to you, and isolation, so it's not exactly a basket of roses. But come 2021, there was a new air. It was approaching my dad's one year anniversary, and almost two years no contact with the narcissist. It was time to date again. I was not interested in something casual, I wanted a relationship. Somebody who would accommodate my life have the same morals, life goals, etc. Through persistence, positive thinking, and so much more, I currently find myself in a brand new, healthier, happier, loving relationship. And funnily enough, she too was subject to a toxic relationship. Not to brag, but I'm proof that you can successfully move on from a toxic relationship. Of course, I had to have standards, identify red flags, and so on. And I'm not saying this to show off, but to inspire you that you can do the same. It requires patience, time, and a positive outlook. And the following several things. The first important step for you to successfully move on is to come to terms that it was toxic to begin with. Here are some typical signs of a toxic relationship. Complete lack of trust. It could originally begin with them and eventually the pair of you, but a relationship built on zero trust is a disaster. No communication. If you can't hold a bloody conversation with your partner or they don't listen or care, honestly, what are you doing? Controlling behaviours, gaslighting, manipulation, or perhaps they do certain things and they keep it as secrets, they bend the truth, make you tread on eggshells. Feeling underappreciated. You go above and beyond, pay for everything, do everything, show your love, time, energy. It's never reciprocated. You fight literally all the time. Arguments, disagreements are normal in healthy relationships from time to time. But all the time, where resentment builds, you never resolve your issues? Not good. You make excuses for one another. If you're excusing their behavior, or they're getting away with murder and you're just allowing them to do so, that's toxic. Lying, of course, what they do for work, what they do with their day, who they're around, and of course, finally, cheating. My last toxic relationship was with a narcissist. It was challenging, and she was a very negative, difficult individual to handle. The level of entitlement was off the scales, and I often describe it as being in a vortex of toxicity spiraling out of control. I could have easily come out of my relationship thinking, I loved her. And it was me that brought the worst out in her. Maybe if I did this, maybe if I changed or whatever. That is normal, healthy closure, which you cannot 
and should not apply to a toxic relationship. There is nothing normal about a toxic relationship. Stop rationalizing. Just accept it and accept they were toxic. You will never be good enough for the wrong person. Me and my new partner regularly talk about what we had gone through and what we have both accepted that our exes were toxic for us and we've learned and grown as a result. There are toxic people out in this world. They are willing to date you, marry you, have kids with you. Learn from your mistakes so you can grow into a better person. If you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button. I would really appreciate it. And also support this channel by becoming a member. The link is in the description below. After coming to terms that you were in a toxic relationship, accepting it, comes the next stage, working on yourself. The whole point of this video is for you to successfully move on from your past. The last thing you want to do is start dating a new toxic person. Trust me, you don't want to go down this road. So many people who have had toxic exes in the past make this mistake. It's really sad to see. One woman scared off a good guy I knew just because she hadn't even done the work on herself. I was scarred by my ex, she said, and my new partner was amazing, but I was afraid he was going to hurt me. I couldn't get out of that mindset. In a strange way, I was happy being single for a while, as I took a long break from dating and of course I had grief to deal with as much as other things. Now what do I mean by doing work on yourself? I'm going to highlight the exact thought process I went through, which led me to moving on successfully to a happier new relationship. The first step was of course to acknowledge I was originally with the wrong person, and learn not to make the same mistake. Next to look at where I was in my life. Was I happy with the person I was? What changes did I need to make to improve, to be better, to grow? I had no choice but to bury my dad, but it made me a better man. I started reading more books, doing more personal development, reviewed my life goals, my careers, my financial goals, business goals, fitness goals. I wrote my goals down, reimagined them, edited them, worked on them. I started looking at my social life, my family, the people I surrounded myself with. I did a self audit on my life, everything. And then I got to work. I started pursuing my life goals. I started saving more money. I started thinking about where I wanted to be in 10 years time. And one of my goals was to create this channel, the SCG show. I went to work on myself saying, I will not come out of that toxic relationship worse. I will come out better. It was no coincidence that by making that decision and sticking to it, I found my new girlfriend and our relationship blossomed. Do the work on yourself. It's so important. Don't forget to check out our sponsor, BetterHelp. The link is in the description below. The final step to successfully move on from a toxic relationship is to be familiar with red flags and then allow yourself to be vulnerable again. Now you have full blown experience with a toxic person. Why not use that to your advantage moving forward? Arrogant and lazy people make the same mistake over and over, jumping from relationship to relationship, divorce, divorce, breakup to breakup. Avoid that by becoming familiar with the red flags, the signs of a toxic person. Yes, firstly, use what you've already experienced as the stepping stone. It was entitlement for me and arrogance of the narcissist. That was a clear sign. The person who can't take responsibility, puts the blame on me, manipulates and so on. I saw that almost immediately when I started dating again in people. And I avoided them like the plague, cut contact, moved on. So familiarize yourself with the red flags of toxic people. It's important. But what happens when you find a person who is not toxic? Do what I did. Carefully ask questions. Are they toxic? See if they match up with those red flags. And then allow yourself, once you've got the all clear, to be vulnerable again. And that's putting yourself out there, intentionally or unintentionally. Show a part of yourself that you may feel sensitive about, exposing something that makes you feel seen by others. Once I knew my current partner was a good match for me, I wanted her to be with me, officially. And she said yes. In my new relationship, I'm willing to express more, be more open, express my feelings, allow her to express her feelings, communicate more, and so on. 
Because if you have walls up, barriers, and you get that feeling, oh, this doesn't feel right, like you maybe did in your previous relationship, you cannot bring that to your new one. Because you run the serious risk of ruining something potentially healthy and potentially wonderful. Most people do bring their baggage and negativity to a new partner, and things just always turn sour and bitter. AKA, they never really move on, like ever. So please don't do this. So please, successfully move on by identifying red flags, allowing to be vulnerable when you feel comfortable, or not them, when you feel comfortable, and you will be so much happier as a result. Hey, thanks for watching. Be sure to comment, like, and subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video, here's some more content you might be interested in.